Hi guys, it's Kobe here and in today's video we are going to talk about Cinema 4D's Voronoi Fracture in the MoGraph menu. So this is part of my MoGraph menu object explanation series. And we are going to do well to explain almost every attribute or every parameter in the attributes manager of the Voronoi Fracture. And in the end we are going to create our own simplified version of this scene using the things that we've learned. So let's get in. So the Voronoi fracture breaks down objects into smaller fragments, basically using points. And because it's a more graph object, more graph effectors can be applied to it, just like you do something like the cloner object. And you can also add dynamics to it as well. So I have Cinema 4D open here, and this is Cinema 4D R25. But the Voronoi fracture actually started in Cinema 4D R18, and there was a bit of update in R19 and upwards so since like from r19 r20 upwards i think everything i'm doing here should be you should be able to do it or should be fine with you so i'll go into my MoGraph menu and i'll create my voronoi fracture right now we need the object that we want to fracture in here so i'll create a normal cube and it's very easy to use the voronoi fracture all i have to do is to make the cube a child of the voronoi fracture and you can see now we have our fragments it's broken our cube down into several fragments and you can see it by the colors that it's giving each fragment right so if we select our vulnerable fracture we can come to the source attribute manager and in the source tab you see what's happening so it's generating it's using this point generator to actually break down our cube right and it give it give us this point generator by default by itself we can go ahead and add whatever we want to use as our point um, generator right and in the point generator in here we can actually toggle it on and, or on and off so if you want you can toggle it on and off and we sometimes you might not want to see the point in here so we can just click on these dots and you also can hide the points for us right and if you have the point on us so sometimes too you might not want to you might want to see every point even if you don't have the generator selected so right now if i click outside and see the point we can see but you can turn this on show all point and it's still even without the point generator selected you can still the point that you have see the point that you have selected right and also another thing let me actually increase the point amount so now the point that it's using to frag, uh, fracture our object is 20 so if i should increase it to like say 200 you can see our fragments have increased and the point two have increased but sometimes we, ha we have a lot of point or fragments it can actually slow our scene down so what we can do is we can actually reduce in the viewport our fragment to very low you know count so that we can actually work very fast but when we render in the picture viewer everything will be in there so you can see the difference in here here we have the full fragment but in the viewport is very little right now the point generator we can also go ahead and drag in any object you can drag in parametric you can drag in a matrix object, spline object, um, um, cloner object, particles, a lot of objects actually work in here, which you can simply drag and drop. But for now, we are using this. So we can also, by default, we have these things that we can use. So we can add a bit more. So you can see now we've added another level of distribution, which we can also continue to add everything as well. We can even add shader as well. As a point source so let me actually delete these two and I'll add shader source and when we select the shaders uh, point generator for the shader we come down here you can see we have shader and we change it to like let's say gradient and you can see it's giving us um, a fragment of a um, point of 20 and now it's using the gradient to distribute it um, how we want it to go so if I actually come into the gradient and maybe reduce it you can see how the re re gradient is affecting our our fragment so there are several like um uses case for this thing so now let me go back to my vernal fracture and delete this and like i said earlier we can use several objects in the source here to actually generate points so that you can use that to frag, um, fracture our object so in this case i'll use this same cube that i'm actually trying to fracture as our point source now let me drag in the cube into our point source and you can see instantly our point source um, our cube has been fragmented into several pieces like by all looks similar and you can see the reason what it's using is with let me select the vulnerable fracture and come select the cube you can see it's generating points at every vertex of the cube and that's because 
with the cube selector, if you come down here, you can see um, creation method, it's using the vectors of the cube. We can actually change it to edges and you can see at every edge, it creates a point at every edge. In the polygon center, at, in the center of every polygon, it creates a point in there and now on the surface, now it gives us randomly on the surface again in the volume, like you do to like a clonal object or any other object. So you can set it to um, polygon center. And now let me actually go in here and if I should increase my segment to like let's say 5 by 5 by 5 and you can see it's giving us some nice looking fracture like I said it's because it's a more graph object if more graph effectors also work on this one so we can come in here and add code to more graph effector add let's say a random effector and you can see the random effector works on it like you would do to any other MoGraph object, right? Also, we can add several other objects. So I have the cube in here. I can leave it in there or I can toggle it off. Then I can come into the MoGraph menu and I'll use something like, let's say, um, the matrix object. So I'll actually simply drag in, select our vulnerable factor and drag in the matrix object and you can see the kind of fragment it's also giving us. So there are several possibilities. Let me actually delete the matrix. You can also come in here to assimilate and use, let's say, um, a particle emitter, right? Let me actually bring it um, some, let me actually leave it in the middle and now drag it into our Voronoi fracture, the source, and let it play. And you can see, whilst the particles are generating, it's actually, also generating like the fragment and it's moving depending on where the particles are so there are like several possibilities with this when it comes to this so i can also delete this one and again let me actually create um a spline let me use a normal let's say a rectangle rectangular spline drag it in here so and you can see like the spline tool is also working because it's also using the same point so i can actually um scale it down oh actually i mean the scale the rectangle here and it's also using the same thing like it did with the um object so when you come in here you can see it distribute it's creating points evenly on the rectangle we can change it to the vertices and all of those things uh, step and very all those things so now it's set to even and i can increase it to get the kind of um fragment that you want so the Voronoi fracture is very powerful so this is about the source tab and the things that you can actually do right so i'll go ahead and delete this one and now i'll go i'll turn on this particular the cube again i actually set it to um on the surface so that it will be a bit random or actually let me delete the cube and now add a new distribution source. So it will go back to the default, but I'll increase it to like, let's say 100, all right? And now let's go into the object tab to explain what happened in there. So in the object tab, the first thing is more graph selection and more graph weight. And we can actually use more graph selection and more graph weight to control um, the our fragments or where we want the, the fragment to be high, like and all, the, and all of those things. That's when we are using something like clone and stuff like that. We'll go into that one later. But now the next is we use a um, colorized fracture. So you see, whenever we add it to the, we add our object to the vulnerable fracture, instantly it gives us a default, these colors for us to see what's going on. So, we, but if you don't want it, you can simply turn it off by clicking on this one as well. And another thing is, let me change the display to garage shading and you can see it's the fragment in here right what's happening is that let me also bring this one to 0, 0.00 so that it looks a bit cleaner here so what's also happening is that we have so many angles and angles is, i think polygons that have more than five vert like four vertices right so like either it's either quad or triangles and if it's more than four then it's uh, angles right it's creating several angles and in some instances you probably might not want that so when you actually select the check crits on check the crit angle surface now it tries to make 
all of them at least triangles and stuff like that so that you don't have angles in here so that's what he also does then another thing is offset fragments so now if i come in here and see offset fragments you can see now it's shrinking as in offsetting it making it smaller from each other right now with the offset fragment on you can invert it so now you can see it's affect the places where the fragment wasn't affecting is now where it's affecting so you can invert uh, fragment and the next thing is hull only so now it's now let me uncheck the invert and you can see it's treating the cube as like a, a hollow object some sort of a shell object that's breaking it down and you can come to the thickness hull only you can add thickness to it as well right and i can have interesting so if you invert it now you can see you have some interesting um shape or, or object in here some organic interesting looking object in here next is the hollow object and with that one i actually use a different object to explain so i'll go ahead and hide this particular voronoi fracture so that you use a different um, so i'll create a new cube right and i'll let me zoom out and make it editable by pressing c uh, i'll select the faces and i'll actually control a to select all faces and now right i'll choose the extrude so i'll extrude and i'll make sure create caps are checked so that it, it wouldn't create a whole it wouldn't do a normal extrude. it create um polygon at the faces other in the inside of the cube i mean so i'll extrude it i'll set it to like let's say just five and for us to see what's going on let me actually change our views and if you see it now our cube have thickness so it's not just a normal cube right so all we have to do is now the cube have thickness right so we are good now let me actually make sure it, everything is set back to default so it's not just a, a normal cube that like you can see this one has thickness so if i should go ahead and create a mograph vernoy fracture and now put our cube in here um you can see it's actually fracturing it but if I should add like let's say go in fact let me go into my object and now the offset fragment increase it you can see what's happening it's not actually recognizing the whole aspect part of the of the cube I can even use the random ob or random effector too so if I come to the um, effectors and I drag in the random in here and I'll make sure it's on you can see it's not recognizing like the cube as an object with thickness so that's where the whole object comes in so if i come in here into the object and i check whole objects you can see now it recognizes the thickness of our cube and now it can now it's fraction it the way we want it so that's what the whole object does as well so i'll go ahead and delete it i hope it's understandable the next is optimize and close holes so there are some instances for instance let me create let's say a sphere right and i'll make it editable as well and intentionally i'll select faces intentionally delete this face and now if i should make it um a chart of the voronoi fracture let me actually check on un check the randomness and the offsets for okay let me reduce the offsets for now so you can see now it's making it it's treating it as like a shell object because of the deleted uh, polygon that we had here but that's where if i actually check what do you call it optimize uh, optimize uh, and close holes you can see now it's closed that hole and now it's seen it as one full object so that's what the optimize and close holes also does for us now the next is save file save results to file so there are instances that you want to save your fragment if you have like a very huge fragment in it you want to save it and add it to file so that when you are opening it you don't have to recalculate and all of those things but i think that one will also make your file a little bit bigger and stuff like that that's basically what it does the next is auto update setting and that's if i uncheck it right and now i go to my voronoi fracture and go to the source select the point distribution and increase it you can see nothing happens right so the auto makes it automatically happen but if it's very important there are some times that you, you might have a big scene and when you increase your fragment in that's the way i was doing it like using playing around with the amount like that it can it calculates every 
change that you make so you probably might want to turn it off and now when you are done you just click update and now it will update by itself so that's what the update button does and this auto um, auto update animation is when you are using something like effectors on clones and stuff like that now it puts the animation of the effectors also into consideration all right next we will check our sorting tab and see what happens so with the tab the sorting tab selected you can see we have set sort here so if i should actually check the sort and let me first of all increase the fragment a little bit more and turn off the offsets actually to zero right um i don't know what's going on oh okay auto update i see auto update is on unchecked so let me actually put it on and i can see automatically it's updating right so now everything is fine so let's go into the sort and now the sort is now set to x so basically that's where if i actually use something like um um, effector come to move graph effector and use a um, step effector right and now let me change it to let me re reduce the scaling so you can see now how it's sorting it let me turn it now you can see it's sorting it from the x on the x axis so if i go to the volnoi you can see in the where, where is it this particular Voronoi fracture actually this random is not needed for now and now we go to the sort you can see the sort is set on x right so it's basically sorting it on the x axis and now we can invert the sort so that it will come from the other side of the x axis if we use y you know now the sorting will start from the top and similarly the z will also will make it start on the from the z axis so basically that's what the sorting does you can also use an object to actually for for instance i can come in here and i'll create let's see an all objects right and now in the voronoi fracture i'll drag in the null object here so now it's going to use the null object to um determine where the sorting starts from. so if i should move it here and now you can see where but because it's set to invert now it's using the opposite so it's, it's supposed to start from here but now using the opposite so if i come to the voronoi and uncheck the invert sort you can see now where the sort like it starts from so it sort of starts from this particular side so what the sorting basically is doing is is changing the index of the Voronoi so actually let me simply um in fact let me create a new scene so that we do this so i'll create a normal um, cube and i'll make it thing so that we see what's happening then I'll create a Voronoi um, fracture, so I can also find it here in the MoGraph menu. So I create a Voronoi fracture, and I'll make the cube a child, right? So now you can see we have a cube broken down, and I'll actually increase it a little bit to 100, right? So this is a Voronoi object uh, created, and now let, with the, let me go back to the sorting and I'll check sorting on for now. And what the sorting is basically doing is changing the indexes of the object. So if I should go ahead and use our null object again and drag into a uh, distance. So now it will determine where the index our uh, indexes start from. So if I come to the transform down here, we can change it, the display from none to index. And you can see every fra fragment or every fracture object has its number right and it's randomly placed all over but with the sorting because the sorting is in the middle but if i should move it somewhere here you can see now the numbers are changing wherever i move it now the numbers are basically changing so that's basically what it does right um let me go back to the sorting yeah. so you can see now the numbers are changing immediately i start moving the null object and everything so basically it uses the index of this um of the uh, fragments 
to determine where like it starts with the counting one two three and all that so that's what the sorting basically does so if i unclear this and i use the x you can see now if i change you can see where we have our one right if i change it to y you can see now it changes if i change it to z it changes so depending on where you have it that's where you basically that's how we basically work on it using the uh, indexes of the fragment to actually determine how a, like a sort of numbers it across next we will talk about the detailing tab so with that i will actu actually create a new scene so i'll create a new scene here and we'll go ahead and create a ordinary fracture and we use a cube make it a child and now we have our fragment right so if i select the voronoi fracture and come to the detailing tab you can see we have here and what the detailing tab does is this is very good when you are doing something like breaking of force or doing natural looking fragment of stuff so for instance i'll enable the detail right and now i'll come to our actual i'll come to our object and offset the fragment right and now you can see inside the fragment let me actually use something an effector to let me see i'll use a plane effector to take it so that we see what's happening in the inside so i'll go in the plane effector and parameters and i'll actually rotate so that the inside shows so that we see what's going on in the inside so you can see when you come to the detailing and now disable it you can see everything looks very sharp and like straight line and in realistic or organic realistic breaking especially walls and stuff like that if it's not like glass and for walls and naturally looking stuff it doesn't have those straight edges and sharp edges like that so that's where the detailing comes in so it gives you the details so if i can enable it and i can see instantly the changes in in here now you can also do this um, active viewport to actually when you have a lot of object as well all these things help your viewport to work a bit faster but we are very small fragments so it's fine you can leave it on and now the maximum edges so this all these things here basically are very explanatory if you actually play with it you can simply see what it does so if you reduce it you can see your object the um detailing looks a bit you know smaller and nice and everything but depending on what you want you can also increase it 20 and you can see have like quite sharp detailing and stuff the next is noise surface right so if i check that one first of all let me uncheck it and let me take off my plane effector right i'll also go to the um offset for now and set it to zero and now let me go back to my detailing and now if i immediately turn on the surface you can see now the edges right from the face of it's actually starting start i've started being curvy instead of being so sharp and stuff like that so if i take it and i can see it just straight lines and stuff being a fragment but if i check this one you can see now it begins to have a bit of curve curvature and very roughness and stuff like that so that's what it does and this one also determine the details of the um roughness of the edges so if i increase reduce it to like say two you can see a, and if i increase it to 100 it's still like it, it widens up so it's very self-explanatory if you play with it you can actually understand how things work so i'll set it back to default and the next is smooth normal so let me go back and turn my plane vector so that we see what's going on in here and you can see smooth normal if I uncheck it, you can see now we don't see the smoothness. It's very, um, you can feel every edge and everything sharp and all that. So you can use this smooth normals. And you can use, determine how we want our edges to. So if I check use origin edge, I uncheck it and see we get, you have some smoothness at the edges and everything. We can go in using the fung angle to determine which kind of edge that we want. To be smooth and where well, we want to leave it as sharp as that right but it's best, best to use leave it use original and stuff like that the next is relax inside so with when you play with that you can actually see so it's sort of 
like smoothing the inside right it's like if you use the smooth deformer you can understand it's sort of smoothing the inside and keep um, original surface that's basically what now the noise settings is it's basically using the, the kind of noise that it's using to actually give the detail so you can also come in here to change the kind of noise that you want and all of those things it's basically it's set to turbulence but you can use the kind of noise that you think you want to use to add the details to it so that's basically about the detail tab it's very self-explanatory and it's very good when you are doing a um, breakdown of some objects walls and stuff when you after that you can add your displacement and stuff like that to actually get the proper details that you want next we have the connect text tab where we can automatically create connection between our fragments so i'll actually create a new scene to display that so i'll go ahead and create a normal cube and i'll move it up a bit move it up a bit and now um create my Ronoi fracture object and i'll put my cube in it now we have our fragment i'll actually increase the number of um points in here so i'll increase it to 100 All right and what they actually let me reduce the size of the cube so that we see what's happening so, um so we have like a flat looking um cube and actually set this to let's say eight here and now i'll right click and add simulation rigid body um, simulation rigid body to our Voronoi fracture i'll go ahead and create a flow as well so i'll create a flow and i'll add a collider body to it so simulation collider body right and now let's hit play you can see our fragment uh, object is breaking down i can actually increase the size a little bit more yeah so if i hit play everything breaks down but when we come into our fracture uh, ronoi fracture and we come to connectors we can create um connectors automatically create connectors between our fragment and now it wouldn't break immediately it will need a certain amount of force to break it so if i hit create fix uh, connector hit play you can see it's not breaking like it did initially and that's because the um automatically my 4d if you come up into a object manager i can see we have a connector object here so my 4d has created this connected object connector um, object which is connecting all our fragments so if i come to display and issue enable always on you can see there are a lot of connectors connecting and um, several um, fragments together i can actually reduce the, the size and now if i hit play you can see what's going on here so automatically um the connector is connecting the fragments some of them together and you need a certain amount of force so if i come to the object with the connector um connector object selector and come to the objects uh, in the attributes manager you can see the force needed on it to start breaking is about four thousand centimeter like centimeters All right so if i should hit play see it's not breaking everything but if i reduce it to like let's say just ten thousand and hit play you can see everything is breaking so you can actually come in here to play around with the force to see how well you know um you want to you want your um fra fragment to break also you can actually change the type of connector that you have here and these are all related to my 4d dynamics so you can come in here and play with different types of connectors and you all add, act um differently but this uh, different um topic for another day but for the default is set to a uh, fixed and for the most part i think this one is very fine now we go to our next tab which is um geometry glue and that's another way of connecting um your fragment together as well so i'll set this one back and i'll delete the connect um connector so every back everything is back to the way we started so everything is breaking like we did so if i select the Vronoi fracture and come to the geometry glue we can simply enable geometry glue and now we have a couple of options so we have fall off we have clusters and you have point distance so our first is point distance so point distance is it calculates some point which is 
within certain range that we will set and now bind them together so if i should set it to like say 25 you can see if i hit play some of the um, geometry or uh, fragments will bind together if i increase it the more i increase it you can see more geometries are binding together and if i hit play you can see now we have very few so that's basically what the point they stand that now the next is cluster and the cluster is basically all the fragments that we, we have, it tries to bind them together, but in five different like forms or depending on the amount of cluster you've set. So you can see now if I should hit play, it's just five different um, fragments that we have. But if I should increase it, you can see now, even by the colors, you can see you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I increase it, now we get several um, clusters. So basically, that's what the cluster is done. So if I hit play, you can see we have this. And the next one is fall off. And the fall off, we can use um, Cinema 4D fields or fall off to control um, where we want our object to bind together. All right. So with that, the fall off, what we have to do is add glue fall off. And now it gives us this object. You can see in our object manager, we have the fall off. Um, in our object manager, so when you select it, now we can come to our attribute manager and you can see we have fields. Now we can add any field that you want and use that as our follow. So I'll go ahead and add a CIK, um field and I'll drag it. And you see where I drag it, it binds the fragments there together. And like because it's filled, we can add several um, follow. So I can add another one and now. I'll say this one to somewhere here. I want it somewhere here. So we can add as, as many fields as we want. And now if we hit play, you can see it's binding those ones together. So that's basically what the um, geometry glue also does. Next is our usual stuff um, about um, all the MoGraph objects. So when you come to transform, you can see it's display. We can see it with for now. Let me delete the fall offs because we don't want it, and now everything will come back to the way it is by default. And now, when it comes to the transform uh, tab here, we have our display, which is weight, UV, color, which I've explained in the clone object uh, video. And this is you can see all fragments are separate on their own, so you can actually individually affect them. Um, separate them and here you can see the index of every fragment that's the number of every fragment the weight and all of those things are in here the next tab is the effector tab this is where you add your effectors if you have a MoGraph effector like MoGraph object so if I come in here and create my um, random effector select my Voronoi this is where you drag it into if you don't automatically add it so you can drag it in here the next is we can the selection which this is very important so let me actually open it a little bit so that we see what's happening here and now the selection so we can actually select the part of the Voronoi fracture that we want so let me actually come to object and first of all hide uh, colorize fragment and now offset fragment I'll increase it a bit so that you see what happens so if I come into the selection now you can actually set selection of where a particular part of the um, Voronoi fracture that I want so if I say inside faces and I check you can see now it gives us a selection tag so what happens is let me create a material here and now change the color to red and now I drag it drag it onto the uh, Voronoi fracture. I can see right now it's affecting every part of the Voronoi fracture, but we can just limit it to just the inside faces. So if I should now drag the selection tag to the selection place, you can see it's just only the inside that we are affecting. We have inside vertices, so this is for vertices and stuff. There's no um faces, so we cannot actually directly add material to it, but you can use it for some other important stuff like beveling it or um using it to generate some kind of point or geometry anything inside 
great map as well so you can generate a lot of an outside faces as well so now you have the inside faces so if i want to add color to the outside faces too you can create another one and this one will probably make a um let's say green and now it's affecting the whole thing so go ahead and drag in this one and you can see we have the inside red outside so this selection gives us the various faces of our um object that we fractured so, and you can depending on what you are doing with it you can actually enable any of them and you get control over it so quick one i have a um a cloner in here and i'll go ahead and create a vernoy fracture where is it actually create a vernoy fracture make the clone a child of the vernoy fracture and you can see it's uh, breaking down our clone object right i'll come to the source and i'll increase the number of points in here so i'll make it probably 150 which is okay and now i'll hide the point i don't want us to see the points it's fine but i want to explain this so if i come to the attribute manager and the object tab you can see you have more graphs more graph selection here and with the more graph selection we can actually select in the clone object the object we want a very null fracture to affect so if i select my clone come to the more graph menu and i choose more graph selection it gives us the more graph selection too and now you can see in the um cloner we have some orange looking some dots in all the cubes so we can now go and start painting on it to set our more graph selection so if i paint with the clone selected if i paint any of the object you can see a tag is created you see what's happening a tag is created so now i'll use this tag and drag it into our Voronoi fracture so select the Voronoi fracture and the more graph selection you can use this as the more graph selection and you can see it's affecting only this particular um object the object i painted over and you can see all the rest are like all the in the queue you can see this particular small dot in the right in there so if i hold shift and paint over this as well you can see actually it's supposed to be i should make, i should make sure the clone is selected and the more graph object tag is selected if i want to add to it so now if i hold shift and paint over this you can see now this one too has been added and this one is being fragmented or being fractured same way if i hold shift here and this one too will be added so now you can use this one to control if i want to um fragment in the clone object if i hold control i can deselect it and now so i think it's this too so basically that's what this one does the same thing applies the more graph weight so same way we can set more graph selection we can also set more graph weight and that one too can also work so if i come to the more graph menu you can see we have more graph weight paint brush and it's the same it works the same similarly as the more graph selections so like i said earlier let's see how we'll create our own simplified version of this scene so I have this scene open, which I've created a cube already, nothing special. I'll just change the dimensions of the cube and I have a floor object. And we are going to use the cube as our wall that we are going to break. So straight away, what I'll do is I'll go to my mole graph and I'll create my Voronoi fracture. I'll make it a, a the cube a child of it. And I'll come to the point generator and I'll increase um, the point amount to 500 for now right and you can see in the original um video it's like a gradual fragmentation so it starts from the right on a path like that so that's what you are going to do so we'll create a spline which you can simply come in here and use a spline to control how our um, fragmentation starts so i'll use like let's say the sketch path and i'll actually create something like that um, which is nothing special so i can actually go ahead and delete the first line i created because this is fine so we've created our spline in here and now we will use that to actually start doing the fragmentation so i'll actually move the spline a bit forward so that we can see it here now the next thing is like i said we will add um a dynamics object to the floor and the cube so i'll select and the Verona. so i'll select the two right click and add rigid uh, simulation tag rigid body and you can see 
because the floor in Sigma 4D floor is infinite, it automatically changes it to a collider body, which means it cannot move or anything will happen to it. So if we hit play, you can see our object is fracturing. But that's not what we want. We want it to be triggered, right? So that's what we are going to use the, the path to do. Another thing is, you know, in the video, in the middle where the uh, fracture, the fragmentation starts, the, uh, the fragments, they are a little bit smaller and not like the whole um, scenes v, um, fragment. So I'll actually use the spline. Or what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll create a normal matrix object. Right, and now the matrix object, I'll set it to um, object. Then I'll use the spline in the matrix object to generate some points on the matrix object. I'll then increase um, the amount of points that will be created. I'll even set it to even and increase it a bit more. Then what I'll do is I'll use the random effector to randomize the points that it's generating in the matrix object. Right, so I'll use the random effector so that the points will be randomized. I'll actually reduce um, the scale of the randomized. So then I'll drag the matrix, select the Voronoi fracture, and I'll dra drag the matrix object right into the Voronoi fracture. So where uh, the path will be, the trigger will start, the particle um, fragments there will be smaller. So I'll go ahead and hide this. So you can see we have like some particles there, um, fragments there which are very small. So now how are we going to trigger the animation? Now when you play, it's still the same thing. It plays, everything breaks down. So how are we going to trigger? We can use two things. So we kind of come into our Voronoi fracture, the rigid body, and you come to dynamics. You can see the trigger is set to immediately, meaning immediately we hit play. It starts, the dynamics starts working. But we can also change it to on collision. That's unless something collides with it, that's when it can, it can be broken down so if i set it on collision and i'll probably let's say i create a sphere here i'll bring it back and i'll make the sphere right click i'll make it simulation rigid body and i hit play nothing happens but immediately i start oh actually let me make the, the sphere rather um a collider body so that i can move it so i'll make the sphere collider body if i hit play nothing happens but immediately i move it you can see now it's breaking a uh, wall so that's what the collider this thing um on collision does but we are not going to use on collision we have another one that i'm going to use and that one is a bit easier to calculate depending on um, what you are doing i don't want to the collision immediately start it, it triggers through and a lot of things happen but we are going to use at velo uh, velocity peak and you are going to use more graph effectors to control a fragment so wherever the effector controls the fragment then it triggers the um dynamics right so let's we've set it to at velo velocity peak and what you are going to use is i'm going to use a a normal random effector so i'll come in here and i'll create effector random effector then in the random effector i'll go to the field and i'll set it to um spherical right so let's hit play and see what happens but immediately i move actually let me Come in here to make sure, okay. So, and make sure I have Ronoi fracture effectors. Okay, then let's drag the random in here so that it will affect it. Uh -huh. So, let's go back, select the spheric, um, spherical field, and hit play. Nothing happens, right? But immediately I move this, you can see now it's triggering the animation. So, we will use the effector to do that. So, now let's what we will do is we will use the effector we will use a line to spline so that the effector will follow this path to move right so i'll right click on the spherical effector and i come to my 4d tag align to spline so it means the sphere should align to a, a, a spline that you will give this tag so which spline do we want to align it to now say this particular spline right now it's set to the end so if you come to the position and now remove it you can see now it's following the path of the um spline i'll make the spherical um a field small a bit smaller now we can set our keyframe so let me actually increase our 
frame so i'll make it like 250 because we don't know how long it's going to take so i'll set our keyframe um at frame zero maybe i'll make, move it forward a bit at frame zero yeah so i'll set our keyframe here and one thing is i'll select the spline and i'll come to its intermediate point and i'll make it uniform so that the movement of the um uh, spherical field on the spline will be a bit smooth and uniform so now i'll go back to the align to spline and i'll now set a keyframe here i'll run 190 97 um okay let me it play so that it doesn't do some weird stuff and when we get to like let's say frame 200 i'll set it all the way to um a eleven percent. So if I hit play, let's see what happens. You can see it starts triggering the animation and now it's breaking. It's perfect. What we do is now we come to the random effector and we reduce um we reduce the parameters come to parameters and reduce the position. So I'll just set it to just five 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 and I'll actually add rotation in here. So I'll set rotation on the pitch to like let's say 16 or something something small we don't need and now you can see it's now breaking it down so basically we've done the first part of animation where it's following the um the path to trigger the dynamics all right so the next is the ex big explosions so now that one to use another random effect we can actually use the same random effector so i will come in here to the field and i'll add another sphere spherical field all right and now i'll move this one so the first explosion happened somewhere at the top here so i'll make this a bit bigger and i'll change the position to somewhere here all right and i'll move it back was right so it hits play and it begins to move we can actually increase the frames uh here so i'll make it with of the spline object i'll make it 150. so when we get to somewhere here we want the this thing to come in the uh, the other circle field also to come in so now we also animate that one so from frame 100 i'll bring it back frame 100 i'll set a keyframe for the position so i'll set keyframes here and when we get to like frame 1 120 we'll move it in and see we'll move it in here then we set keyframes again so now let's see what happens if i hit play and now you can see it's playing immediately gets there this one comes in and a big explosion happens in there so basically we are on course right the next thing i'm going to do is i want the explosion that's will be happening here a bit you know massive so i want it to be full a bit but so i'll actually use a um another effect i'll use um plane effector to push it forward first of all and now make it so i'll use plane effector then i'll actually come to the fields and i'll use the same spherical field in here right but what i'll do with this plane effector i'll make sure it's actually applied to the fields of the Voronoi fracture so i'll drag in the plane effector here or actually the Voronoi fracture now drag in the plane effector oh Voronoi fracture yeah and i'll drag in the plane effect uh, what's going on the vulnerable fracture selected i make sure i'm i come to the effectors and i'll drag in the plane effector yeah now if i hit play nothing will happen and when we get there boom i like it and i'll push it forward as well i'll make sure the plane effector permit uh, parameters and it should push it forward on on z so basically i hope you get the idea of everything that 
we are trying to create using the same technique, right? It's actually pushing it back. So let me then set it to 100 so that it pushes it forward. Oh, okay, I've actually flipped the, but it doesn't matter. So now if I hit play, you can see it pushes it forward. Another, so the next one is we have to create another, the second explosion for the other side. So I'll use the same, um, I'll create another if, uh, field in here. So select, um, with this one selected, I come to the field and I'll add another spherical field. And that's going to be the second explosion in here. And mind you, we can adjust all, all of these things. So when we when we are done with the basic, we now refine things. So I'll come to the spherical field. I'll make this one to a bit bigger somewhere here. And I'll move it back. And do we'll move it back as so, well. And now that one too, when we get to frame after this one then this one too comes in so somewhere in here frame 23 we set keyframe in fact set keyframe for just the z position and now it also comes in boom and now it's set our keyframe so basically we are using the more graph effectors to trigger our animation. So draws it boom, and now this one also comes in. But the impact of this one is very small. I'll actually reduce the animation in here. Then I'll actually also in the plane effector fields, I'll drag the second spherical field, the third spherical field that we did. So I'll drag and add it to it as well. So now we can have to feel the impact as well. So Boom, and this one boom, as well. It's quite fast. So let's reduce this. So it's basically playing around with it for a couple of minutes and eventually get the kind of impact or the kind of animation that you want. This one feels a bit weak. This big one feels a bit weak. And I'll select it and see why it's also feeling that weak. I'll actually close its animation, drag the animation and close it a little bit. I come to oh actually so now what happened is because we drag in the second and uh, this spherical field it's overriding this one so now the plane effector is not happening affecting this particular spherical effector because this one is overriding it so what we have to do is to uh, change the blending mode to max so now they will all work together because this one will be applied on top so if I hit play see this one is it gives impact and this one also gives the same impact. I'll actually reduce the rate at which it goes up and bring it back to like, let's say 40, because I want it to just come down. And now we are almost there, right? So basically, so after this whole thing, we can actually let it come in here. So for instance, I can, um, let's play it again. Breaking it down, you know. So now let me actually select this field. After it's done, we can actually go ahead and add extra keyframes. So I'll go to the next frame, I'll set keyframes, and now in here, after it's done in here, I want it to come somewhere up here to also add these things to it. So I'll set a keyframe, and now when it moves a little bit for it. I want it to come and clear this once as well. So I'll set another keyframe for it. And now let's see what happens. So we'll do similar thing for this one as well. So I'll select the other spherical field. And now after that one too is played, After it's played, I'll let it go forward a bit and make sure if we miss it here, then it goes forward a bit. Can actually now move it somewhere here to actually clear this one, set a keyframe 
then go for the bit and I'll let it come in somewhere here to also break these ones down and I'll set a keyframe. So if I hit play, this is just to give you an idea. I mean, to get it as detailed as the original one, we might have to play around with several things in even other secondary objects, other um, uh, um, fluid sims that which is will give us the smoke and gas and everything. But you get, I hope you get the idea of how to create something simple like this. So now, what we're going to do is we just add that. So I'll select the Voronoi fracture and I come to our collision. Um, and I'll uncheck the colorized fra fragment, fragments and I'll re uncheck the points so that everything looks um, as simple as it is. Then I'll add my material. So I'll add this particular material. In fact, I'll add this one rather to our object. And now when I hit go to annul, I'll set annul sky and I'll set it to a physical sky. And let's see what happens if I hit play a bit. Some in here. Right, and I'll come to my annul IPR. And I hit play, you can see what's going on here. It's quite simple. You can also apply even now not material to the floor as well, so I can add it to the floor. Now you can see what's going on in here. So zoom in closer. And now that's basically the idea. So all you have to do is to take time to add extra stuff. All right, I'll pause it, hit play so that you get a bit more fracture. And in here. And I, I want to, I don't like the way this one delays, so I can actually select the third one and I'll drag its keyframes back so that it also starts in earlier a bit. So now if I hit play, delete this happens. Still, I don't like, I want it to come in a bit earlier, so I'll drag it a bit back more. And now let's hit play again. So you can see the way it's breaking it apart. So if I hit um, render, it's basically doing what we want. We can actually, I, another thing is the explosion is too much. You can actually come into the perimeter and there's, you can make it just 50. And now that one to make a different um, explosion. So let's see what happens with that one as well. So basically, everything I'm just showing is just to give you a fair idea of how you do this particular thing, right? It's for you to get as detailed as you have to add extra things like so the small detail, the small, small details that you see in here with the original one, all um, are secondary um, particles or secondary particles that you add after um, you've done your basic simulation. So the big chunks. Um, after that, you add your small, small particles, like with the same Fronoi fracture, you can add small, small ones. Then now you add your fluids and stuff to give it a bit more detail. But this one is to just to illustrate to you, it's the similar idea. So after that, you can actually go ahead and add the small, small particles, which you can also trigger up like using the same um, particular style to do this. I guess this was helpful. And if you want to see more detailed version, of this particular one you can please add it in the comment and i'll actually do a more detailed one and actually try to add even the fluids and um, fluid sims and all of those things if you are interested so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one